guys, David Jennings here from OnlineTradingMastermind.com and we've got a pretty special event today. We're sitting with Mark McRae and also Stuart McPhee. Um, Mark's over here from uh, South Africa for a couple of weeks now, just having a look around. I've been fortunate enough to get a little bit of his time and we've got a few of your questions that you've sent in that we're going to ask Mark. So thanks for, for the time. Thank you. Um, Probably the easiest way and best way to get started, I think, would be to find out a little bit about how you got started trading and, and what was it that sort of really got you hooked with trading? Um, I've always sort of been interested in trading. Uh, I've been trading professionally since uh, probably 1998. And before um, I got involved with trading, I was involved with casinos. I was a casino manager. And um, and they're very similar because uh, in a casino, as a man, or, uh, in a casino you don't actually gamble. It's all about percentages. So you're, um, you half of my job was analysing figures and looking at figures to see where uh, which tables were doing well or which table or pet wasn't doing well. Hmm. So it's very similar to trading in that much is that if you're going to be a good trader, you don't actually gamble. So. A casino doesn't care who wins or loses, it's all about turnover and percentage and, and getting the right blend correct. So um, when I left uh, casinos, I had tried a few businesses and they were okay. But one of the things I wanted to do as um, having dealt with so many people for 18 years was not to deal with people. So I worked from the inside out. I wanted a job, I wanted to do something where it had unlimited potential. So, for example, if you have a restaurant with uh, 50 seats, you can only ever have 50 people sitting down. It has limited potential of how much money you can make. So, I wanted to be involved with something that didn't have a limitation. Mm -hmm. And, for example, in trading, there's no limit to how much money you can earn. So, that was one of the requirements. The second requirement was that I could work from home, um, which trading fitted into. Mm -hmm. And uh, the third requirement was that there would be no staff. So, uh, having dealt with <clears throat> staff and people uh, for so many years, um, it, you know, it's a pain. So, I wanted to do something that allowed me that freedom not to deal with people, to work from home and had unlimited potential. Um, and there are not that many jobs around like that. Mm -hmm. So, trading was uh, how I, I landed up trading. And uh, the, there was a period of about six months where I was trying to decide what to do. And um, eventually I, I saw a course advertised in London um, for a Forex trader and I went down and studied in London for a little bit and, uh, and from there that's really where I started. You started in the Forex, that was yeah. the first mas market that you started? Yeah, yeah, Forex market. And uh, from the Forex market, um, it's quite strange, you know, the, uh, uh, it, it progressed, I became obsessed with trading and um, eventually became involved with the uh, Society of Technical Analysts and done some lecturing in London and um, uh, did, did lots of different types of trading. And I also made a point, which I think is very good for your viewers to note, that um, I became, whenever I, I, I opened an account with a broker, I went to the broker. So I'd often go to London and just sit in the broker's office or ask to be shown around or have lunch with them and see how the operation worked. And through that evol evolution over the last 10 years, um, the Forex market has changed incredibly. Mm. You know, when I started, there was no mini accounts. So now you have mi um, micro accounts. Uh, you traded full contracts, that was it. And the minimum um, account size then was $50,000 and that was 10 years ago. And also in the forex market, in those times when you traded, um, if you traded Japanese yen or Swiss francs or um, and those, uh, Deutsche marks in, in those days, your profit and loss was in those currencies. Mm. So uh, a lot of uh, people come into the forex market now, they don't realize that because they see their account in dollars, that what's actually happening is you're making or losing in the currency you're trading in. Mm. So there was always a conversion at the end of the day, so you had two exchange rates to worry about. Hmm. So yeah. um, the so I sort of evolved from there, and it's one of those things where it becomes an obsession. Yeah. To trade, so uh, did I answer the question? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose with that, that obsession. It's funny. I know when Stuart was chatting with um, Mark Cook as well. That was one of the other things as well. He had said, um, and I think it's a a common theme that once you start trading 
once you really get into it, it hooks you and it becomes an obsession and, and you want to figure it out. What, what is it, what's driving this obsession? You know, I don't always think that it's money. I mean, uh, obviously money is one of the, the main motivators, but it's a puzzle. Mm -hmm. It's something that um, uh, you want to solve. Um, you, you know, you only need one thing in trading. You only need one pattern. You only need one indicator. You only need one thing that works consistently well um, to be successful in trading. So it's a puzzle that you continuously want to try and solve mm -hmm. or, or to put together <clears throat> to make... Um, uh, work. I don't know how you feel. Do you think it's similar? I was going to say, but it's also um, what you said earlier. What the obsession is, I think, is all those advantages you listed earlier about mm -hmm. the restaurant having maximum capacity, about working with people, working from home, well, not working with people, working from home, all those things appeals to basically everybody. Mm -hmm. That, that mm -hmm. means something to a lot of people, you know, to most people. Sure. So trading has all those things. Trading has the ability to not have to work and deal with people and their problems and their di different idiosyncrasies. Um, there's unlimited potential for profit. Of course, you can lose a lot of money as well, but all those things appeal to people. So that's the obsession. They want to make yeah. it work. Mm -hmm. not, and as you say, it's not necessarily the money. That's terrific, and that's certainly a very um, tangible advantage, but it's all those other things. So they really want to make it work. Yeah. And that's what really grabs you, because we see other people doing it and doing it consistently well, I can be like that, and I want to be like that, mm. and have all those advantages. So that, I think, is a large sure. part of the obsession. Agreed. The other thing that popped up, which I find interesting, where you started with the Forex, I know a lot of what Stuart and I talk to our subscribers about is, you know, when you first get started trading, the Forex, with its leverage especially, really does make it, you know, maybe not the best place to start for beginners, but I'm curious to get your thoughts on that because it, it, there's a lot of potential to lose your shirt because of that high leverage and not understanding trading. What are your <coughs> thoughts on, okay, someone's just getting started out in their trading. You you did fall into the Forex market. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? You know, I think with um, I think Forex is actually one of the safer markets. I mean, just to be contradictory because mm. unlike some markets, you know, I'm thinking of the options market particularly and only some specific um, types of trades in the option market, but you're limited in risk. The, the risk in Forex is the leverage mm. because if you have um, $10,000 or $100,000 or whatever you have in your account, you're limited to that amount that you can lose. Mm. Um, so the risk is really a disciplined thing. I mean, are you prepared to lose that uh, amount in your account? And also, I think that's, uh, I mean, just to give you an example, um, it took me longer to open my brokerage account than it did to lose the first account. I mean, I think I lost my first account in two days. I mean, it was, uh, it took me like three, four days to get all the paperwork together. And as soon as it was active, it took me three, four days to lose the first account. They, um, it happened very quickly. And that was my first lesson that this wasn't as easy as it looked. Mm. But also, um, because you tend to stick, uh, it's probably something similar to you, you tend to live where you grew up. But um, if you're the very first market you're introduced to is Forex or stocks or options, options or futures or whatever, that tends to be the market where you remain. And um, also the time period or the way that, or the manner that you were taught is also the way you try and experiment with. So. I, my first market was the Forex market and I was specifically taught how to trade a five minute chart. Um, and I think that was totally wrong. You know, now, uh, and also with indicators. Um, yeah. And I think that, uh, number one, I don't think people, anybody should trade very small time frames unless they're very experienced or uh, they're that way inclined. Because if you trade and, and, and I'm thinking of myself and I'm thinking of virtually every single person I know who's sat down at a screen because the forex market during the week um, uh, is 24 hours. Yeah. So you can sit there as a five minute trader and be there for 24 hours. Um, and almost, you, it becomes ridiculous. You can be there for 24 hours solid or just roll it over. And um, waiting for, you know, you see, you, you begin to see things in a five minute chart that aren't actually there because you're so close to the market. Mm.